Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and after a brief absence, I am back, and today we are going to look at how to create rocks. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more exciting than that, but basically I needed to create a rock. Uh, so I fired up Blender, thought I could do this in a very simple way, then what I wanted to do is actually blow that rock up. So today we're going to look at creating rocks and destroying rocks. And there's actually quite a few things involved in this system. We're going to look at particle systems a bit. We're going to look at fracturing an, uh, an object. We're going to look at the explode modifier and a bunch of other things. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how a Blender works, or if you've ever wanted to know how to create rocks and make them explode, this is the perfect video for you. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, right off the hop, I thought the best approach to this would just be to come on in here, uh, you know, standard Blender scene, and we could do this really quick and simple by creating the rock by uh, using a displacement modifier. So just take a default shape like a sphere or a cube like this, go to edit modifier and subdivide it smoothly a number of times. Now, so there's your basic outline of a rock. Now I just wanted to decay it a little bit. Uh, so one easy way to do this to actually go ahead and create a new material. Uh, let's see, go there, new material, new texture. Uh, let's create a new one. So. Come on, new. I'm going to create this of type um, marble. So we just want something like that. Or, you know what, we can change. We'll use noise. Da, 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 da. So there's a noise. Uh, we want to probably change the sizes up a little bit, but we can uh, basically use this to displace the underlying geometry we've got. Actually, I'm going back to marble. Marble looked better. Uh, let's go back to our marble. Baroni. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so there, and we're going to use this as a displacement map for our uh, image here. So then you go into modifiers, da, 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 and then come in here and go def or displace, like so. We pick our texture, like so. Uh, we need a vertex group, so let's select here and create a new vertex group, like so. Switch on back, vertex group, select it, like so. We'll apply it in our edit mode. And as you can see, the immediate result isn't that rocky. Even if we jack the strength way down. So strength over here, like so, ah, it's way up, wrong way, wrong way, like that. Even still, this is not, yeah, let's apply that sucker. Edit mode, apply. That's not really rocky. And you know, so my initial idea here wasn't really that much of a success. Even if I come in here and you know, we smooth that out a little bit, you know, it looks a little bit more like a rock, but I've never really encountered a rock that looks like this. So then I immediately thought, you know what, I need to make a bunch of these things. There's gotta be a way to do this. And the nice thing is, there is. Now first off, I've done a text-based version of this exact tutorial we're going through. So if you need more details, don't worry, I will link this down below. And this also links to the very first thing we need, and that is a plugin for creating rocks. And it is available here. So again, this link will be down below. Uh, so if you wanna go ahead and get it. And what you wanna do is basically just go ahead and grab the snapshot of this guy. This will give you a tar.gz file, uh, which is a type of Unix, basically, archive system. You basically undo the JZ and then you undo the tar, and then it'll have these files that we need. What we wanna do is add those into Blender. So basically copy that file into your Blender plugins directory, or that directory into your Blender's plugin directory. So all these guys are in a folder called add under underscore mesh underscore rocks in your blender plugin directory which is if you go to wherever you installed blender so under version scripts add-ons and then what you want to do is add a folder called add underscore mesh underscore rocks and I actually haven't installed on this guy yet so let's go ahead and do this so snapshot So download it, let's go ahead and extract that to the tar file, and then extract that tar file. Come on, buddy. Oh, I guess I have to open it that way. All right, so extract that tar file out. And then we're gonna rename this guy, add mesh rocks. Another way you could do this is actually just individually downloading each of these files, but uh, this is actually probably the quickest way. So I'm gonna copy that folder. Again, just looking inside that folder, you'll see it's just uh, basically this file right here. And now we head on back over to our add-ons folder, paste that sucker in, and now it is installed. So now that we've got that installed, let us go ahead and enable it. So in Blender, go to File, User Preferences, 
add-ons, and then it's called uh, rock something or other. So just filter by rock, and you'll see add mesh rock generator, and that's what we want. Enable that guy like so. Oh, I'm single click. There we go. And if you want to save the settings so you don't have to do this every single time you come into Blender, click Save User Settings right here. So now the plugin is available for us. And close that down. Now the next thing is you actually need to have some geometry in the scene. It seems to be a bug in, a pl a bug in the plugin, but if there is no geometry existing in the scene, the Rock Generator option is missing completely. So do be aware of that. I'll use this guy. I'll leave it available for right now. We'll get rid of it later on. But now that we've installed that plugin, we come down here to Add, Mesh, and you'll see Rock Generator is now available. Go ahead and click that, and you'll see it immediately created us a rock. Now, where is this coming from and what is populating this? Well, before you change anything, you'll see down here under the Tools panel, there are the controls for the Rock Generator. Now, we can have it generate a number of rocks at the same time for us, like so. But I actually just want to go ahead and create one. Uh, we can have it create textures and materials for us, which I'm going to go ahead and do. You'll, you'll notice every single time I touch anything here, any setting, so if I change the Y scale, or any, it automatically starts a new rock for us. Now we can get away from that because that's the random seed at work. So once you've got a base shape you like, just turn random seed off. And now we can actually modify and it'll apply to the one. It won't keep changing everything each time we have a setting change. So we can change different values on the materials. Um, we can change the deformation level, the detail level. Be careful with this setting. Uh, if you scroll it up too high, it will um, completely and utterly destroy your computer. Uh, go ahead and you know smooth the rock out if we wish. We can change the roughness of the rock, like so. I'll switch over to material view. So there is our rock, pretty little thing. And now that we've got it created, we can come down. So this is that's how easy it is to create a rock or the rock generator in here. Uh, once it is done, you'll notice it's actually created a whole whack of modifiers. And this is going to make things very, very slow. So all we want to do is actually just basically come in and apply every single one of them. So now we have our rock in our scene. And let's go rid of our other geometry we don't need. And it's a much better looking rock than what we started with. So now let's actually look at how we make it explode. And again, my first approach sucked. Uh, the easiest way to go about doing that, come back here to the, uh, uh, the select it, uh, we'll go over here to modifiers. We could add a particle system to it. And then we add another modifier, which is basically the particle system modifier needs to exist before this other modifier can be used. And that is the explode modifier. And explode is right there. So we have now added the uh, explode modifier onto our uh, rock. Uh, once again, we need a vertex group going on here. So let's create one, go back to our modifiers, pick our vertex group. So uh, UV map shouldn't matter. And that's about it. So now we go ahead and play in our timeline. And there is our rock exploding. Probably not the end result you wanted. Now, first off, what you're seeing here is the effects of gravity on the world. And if you're in space, you want an asteroid to explode, you probably don't want it to explode this way. So then you can come over here to the world and turn gravity off. So just switch over to the scene setting and turn off gravity. And now there is the result of our explode modifier. Uh, let's go back to the modifier section. You're not going to find a whole lot here because it's actually under the particle system that controls it. Now, we're not going to stick with this for too long because, well, first off, this result is absolutely terrible. Uh, but what we want to do is come over here, particle system, uh, particles. We can modify the end result a little bit here. So first off, we can make this happen a lot faster by finishing it, say, by frame 50. And there's our explosion happening quite a bit faster. We could cut the number of particles down a great deal, so say down to 40. And here, let's... Let's truncate our scene down to 90. So we're getting a little bit closer. So now what we've got basically is the shell exploding, but this still does not look at all like what we want because what it's doing is basically just exploding uh, the manifold or the shell, the outer shape of our polygon. And what we really want is some depth here. So if you're going to realistically have an asteroid exploding in space, um, well, this is pretty terrible, if I'm honest about it. So let's look at what we could do next. And we're going to be jumping back to another Blender particles, uh, sorry, another Blender plugin to do this. So let's go back to our displacement, and we'll get rid of both of these. So you go away. Uh, particle system is harder to get rid of. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave it on. Uh, boom. 
All right, so it's particle system delete. All right, you're gone. So we're back to just our rock. So next up, what we want to do is fracture this object into a bunch of smaller shapes. And this is a plugin that's already installed as part of the default for Blender, but is not enabled. So we go back to user preferences. We flip over to add-ons, and instead of rock, what we want to filter by is fracture. F-R-A-C, and you'll see that there's cell fracture and fracture tools. We actually want to enable cell fracture, like so, and then exit out. So once again, if you're going to want to have this enabled every single time you start Blender, do make sure you click the save user settings so that's persisted between installations. So now that that is done, we go over here to the create tab. Let me just expand this all down. Oh wait, tools tab, my bad. And you'll notice now there is a new section called cell fracture. We want to get, go ahead and click this. And what Cell Fracture does basically is splits your mesh or object up into chunks with actual depth. Uh, so you can see here, it's actually creating a particle system out of our object. You can see right now we have rock. Well, this is going to create a whole new hierarchy of shapes. Now, I want to actually do this. Uh, by default, it will create it into a new layer. And I don't want to do that. I want us to keep it in the actual same layer. So turn that off, so next layer. And the next thing we want to do is determine how many pieces we want to split into. Now, the default is a and that's way too many pieces. Let's like make this say like 16 instead. And then a bunch of other settings here, you can control how it's actually gonna split up, but those are the only two settings I'm gonna do for now. So we're gonna set it to 16. Uh, we're gonna turn it so that it creates it in the same layer instead of doing it in a different layer, and then click OK. And you can see it's running, running and done. So there we've got our original rock, and then it's created a whole bunch of new chunks. So basically we now have pieces. So there you can see it split our guy up into a bunch of different pieces, which is exactly what we want. So now we come on back here, we can actually grab our original rock. Uh, we'll hide it for now because there's a good chance you might actually want to transition between it and the fractured version because you can see the seams here from where they split up. So now that we have our fractured rock, you know, different chunks like so, what are we gonna do with this? How are we gonna make this explode? Well, we're going back to particle systems again. And this is a particle system already. It's actually already created one for us. First things first, we're gonna actually have to add physics to this scene. So I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna pick an individual piece. We're gonna go over to the physics tab and we are going to make this a rigid body. So it's an active rigid, rigid, ah, rigid body. It means it'll be part of the physics simulation. And now I can go ahead and go select everything come down here to the physics tab and we'll add active. So now every single piece in the scene is now an active rigid body. Now if I go back here and turn gravity back on, you will see the effect immediately. So let's turn gravity on. Um, let's go ahead and actually add something to interact with this. So we'll add another mesh, a plane. There's our ground. We'll actually make it a rigid body as well, but this one is not active. This is actually a passive rigid body, so this means that our uh, physics shapes will interact with it. And now let's go ahead and just play. Physics simulation will do its thing. And ta-da, we have a rock that is breaking up. Gravity is pulling it down and it falls, and it's very, I don't know, believable. This is actually a really cool result in a very short period of time, in my opinion. So, pretty good results. I like it. But what I want is not a breaking, falling rock. I want an exploding rock. So how are we going to go about getting this? And that is where these other guys come into. What we're actually going to do is use a force field. Uh, so there are a couple ways you can go about creating this. Let's uh, pause our simulation. And we are in space once again. So we don't actually want a ground. We don't want gravity. So let's turn gravity back off. But what we do want is that force field. So we're going to come here and go add force field force, like so. And this is going to interact with all of the physics shapes in our world. So now I go ahead and press play. And ta-da! There is our exploding rock in extreme slow motion. Now, chances are you probably want your rock to explode a little bit faster than this. Uh, so let's just jack up our strength a fair bit. Go ahead, press play. And pfft, we have an exploding rock. Now you're gonna probably wanna put a particle system on the inside of this thing so you have like a nice dust cloud or a, you know, a, an overlay sprite, transparent sprite so that it, you know, you can see the dust coming with the explosion. But for the most part, we have just created a pretty convincing, fairly low polygon. Uh, you're sitting at 5,000 faces for this result and that's easily optimized. We haven't tried at all to optimize the amount of polygons out of here. But it's, 
pretty convincing. It's, it's kind of what I'm going for here. We can also have each of these particles actually rotate as they spin away. Uh, we can do a couple more of the values with um, our uh, force field effects. We could also have gone, so when you go ahead and add a force field, there's different kinds. So we could have had turbulence, we could have had um, magnetic vortex, we could have wind effect, etc. But what we're using is force and Let's see, shape is not going to really change much. That's We do want it to be a point. You can change a bit with the noise, so the way that things come out. You can also have it with rotation in effect. You can change the flow. I'm not sure what that's going to do in this case. Oh, it slows it way down. Uh, randomize our seed, so if we don't like our end result. And that's about it. That's all we're going to cover today. Essentially what we looked at is using a plugin to actually generate rocks for us. And then we used another plugin called uh, Self Fracture to split that rock up. Now, of course you could use Self Fracture for breaking up any kind of object. Now, the cool thing about it is most of your mesh objects in the world are not solid. So what it does is basically splits one big object into a whole bunch of smaller sub objects, which can then now be easily controlled such as by this physics system here, or as you saw earlier with gravity, or of course we can do a bit of both which is going to give us some terrible results, but hey, we can do it. So that is all we're going to cover today. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. All kinds of stuff, mostly game development related, but uh, we run the spectrum here. Uh, if you do like this kind of stuff, please do click subscribe. Uh, again, sorry for the delay to the regular subscribers. Uh, I'm recovered now. You should see more regular videos coming from me from this point on. Uh, I hope you did find that useful. See you all later. Goodbye.